this route is not for the faint of heart. This is 367 miles of mix between highway, rock crawling, loose soil, I and mean, we even hit snow in this trip. And this is for rigs that are built to do it all. And for people that have a good attitude, are good drivers, and are ready to finally have access to routes that are not only free, but are an upgrade over the backcountry discovery routes. Those are amazing, but they're tailored for motorcycles and it's way more of an overlanding. This is rock landing. This is for people that want to have multi-day expeditions with their friends, explore brand new corners of this country they haven't been to before, and push their rigs to the absolute limit while living out of them. This is America's first rock lander route. Mr. Brad, thank you for having me down here in sunny Southern California so that we could do Rocklander Route SoCal, the very first Rocklander Route ever. Um, thank you for bringing the Pacific Northwest weather with you, buddy, but uh, I'm excited about this, man. I think the Rocklander Routes are going to be super cool, and I'm honored that, uh, that we're doing SoCal first. Yeah, dude, it's going to be awesome. I mean, it's for two reasons. One, I really like it, and two, all the trails in Washington are closed till June. So, but mostly because I really like it. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. Well, I think we're going to see all the weathers. Uh, we've got some snow, we might see some sun, and we might even get a little rain and wind, so it should be pretty interesting. Bring it on, that's what I say. I've actually wheeled Big Bear before, but I haven't done this trail that Brad thinks we should start with called Holcomb Creek. Uh, but if we can get through Holcomb Creek, then we'll get back on a section of this trail and we'll kind of see what time it is and work our way to Gold Mountain or work our way to camp. We'll just kind of see how things go. This country has so much public land worth exploring. And I'm making these routes to give you an excuse to get together with your friends and go explore corners of the country that you haven't been before. And of course, I need to satisfy my appetite of eating big rocks with things I build in my shop. This first little rock garden on Holcomb Creek is a gatekeeper. And it's not very difficult, especially, you know, we're both on 39s, so we have vehicles that I would say are overbuilt for a rock lander route. Although, you might argue that that's not true once you see some of the other stuff that we do on this route. But in any case, to do Holcomb Creek, I would say that a smaller, shorter wheelbase rig on like 35s would be adequate. Um, but if you've got something a little bit longer, like a JK, like a four-door Jeep, or a, uh, a Tacoma or something like that, bigger is better. You don't want that belly just constantly getting hung up on everything. So in some instances, you're just gonna have to bite the bullet and bring something with a big tire. I know we're just getting started, Mr. Brad, but so far, like you have nailed exactly what I was hoping you'd be able to put together for this route, where it's like, there's rocks, there's beauty. Um, I mean, it's just, so far it's a little of everything and we're just getting started. So I'm just very pumped to see what else you have in store. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I was a little worried that that was gonna be full of snow and that you weren't gonna really get the, uh, the full gatekeeper experience, but I'm glad that was open because uh, it's a good way to kick off this trail. And what I love about Holcomb Creek is it's just, it's really scenic, but there's several little spots along the way like, oh yeah, let's get after it for a minute. So it'll be a lot of fun, I think, the rest of the way. What I'm looking forward to the most on this trail is the rest of the rock gardens. It's a series of a bunch of like long stretches of rock gardens that are much more difficult than what we just went through. And I really enjoy using this Tacoma and the rocks. The extra clearance from the independent front suspension gives it a little bit of an advantage. And it's hard to see out of, but I'm usually pretty good at bumping my way through. 
Unfortunately, that dream of seeing those rock gardens will not be realized today. No way, man. Oh. That sucks. In Washington, I always bring a chainsaw. As many of you have seen, actually I bring two. I did not bring a chainsaw to California. And that's a big tree. That's not like a winch it out of the way tree. That's a big tree. That's, that's a big tree. Well, <laughs> I guess uh, this is where the trail stops for us. That sucks. Yeah. You don't see this very often out here. Man, what a bummer. And we haven't even got to the good stuff yet. I want to get to the good stuff. Yeah, the good stuff is not much further. Well, mm. this is life. This is life. So the route will stay the same that we're going to upload, but it's just going to be a little different for us, unfortunately. Because we have to turn around, this is going to cost us a ton of extra time, whereas we would have been dumped out of this trail somewhat close to the next trail, which is going to be Gold Mountain. Um, but now because we have to go back, air up, hit the highway, and go around, uh, this is going to cost us enough time we're not going to be able to do Gold Mountain. The good thing is I've done Gold Mountain before. It's a little bit more overlandy than Rock Crawley, but definitely worth doing. Very pretty. But we get to see an area that Brad is familiar with that I have never seen that has got the biggest, craziest Joshua trees I have seen in person. Mr. Brad, it's like 33 degrees outside. Yeah, it's a little chilly, and it's just going to get chillier. I came down here to escape this. I, I, he might be onto something about me bringing it with me. Yeah, I mean, we have options depending on uh, how hard you want to press tonight. We're trying to decide where we want to set up camp. We could set up camp here among all the Joshua trees, which would be really cool for me because I don't live anywhere near a Joshua tree. But we think that we're going to go all the way over to Cougar Buttes. And this is a place that is like auditioning for the Rocklander route. It's a place that I've been once before that I thought was super cool. And because it's so much lower in elevation, I think we're going to head there. We're going to stay the night there and hopefully sleep in a little bit warmer temperatures. Four spreads already up. Oh, man. Last night, I talked Brad into making a little side stop. This was not on the original route, but it's a cool place. And with the weather we just happened to luck out on, thinking it was going to rain the whole trip, I would say. This is a beautiful place to spend a morning. What is the ideal Rocklander route setup? I would say there is no ideal setup. And you see, I've got a rooftop tent over there and uh, it's super cold, so I actually put some insulation in it. I have insulation for that tent. And so it's nice and all, but you could totally drink ground tent it. And you could go with a Walmart tent. You could go with one of these space pods. Just kidding, I know it's called a shift pod. It looks like it belongs in space. It's just all about being comfortable and living out of the rig. Or not being comfortable, that's up to you. I mean, <laughs> you sleep on the ground on an air mattress, whatever. But the whole point of this is like, I love like the backcountry discovery routes, but those are made for motorcycles. I want something like that for those of us that like rocks. And Brad's not on anything fancy. It's a JK with like super quality parts. And yeah, it does have one tons. But you could build out a JK on 37s and do everything that we've done so far. And, um, you know, again, you don't need rooftop tents and all this. It's a nice luxury to have, but it's not necessary. The whole point is to get out here, find cool places with your friends, and maybe click on those lockers every once in a while. The trail that we're doing today, which I'm not sure if it's gonna be on the Rocklander route or not, it's auditioning. It's called Bullfrog. I did this one a couple years ago. I remember it being pretty fun, but I don't, I don't really remember much about it, to be honest. I remember being pretty and dry. <laughs> Onyx is saying that it's a seven out of 10, 
Um, I don't know what that means for like rock crawler ratings versus overlander ratings, but that's what we're working with. Yeah, well, I've never uh, wheeled any trails out here, so I'm uh, I'm looking forward to auditioning this trail. Like, it'll be fun. I think, but I think you're right. I think sometimes uh, those those technical ratings can be a little underrated for vehicles like this. Bullfrog starts with a very easy climb up this big, weird rock, and. The Tacoma climb's great because it's long wheelbase, but I can't see very well out of it, so it makes it to where I can't really climb great, but this is not a problem at all. This is nothing like Sand Hollow. What's really cool about this area is this is part of Johnson Valley, and this is like a open riding off-road vehicle area. Oh yeah, that approach is so much better than the Taco. Higher in the air, I love it. It is awesome in the fact that you don't have to stay on trails. You can just kind of choose your own adventure out here. So you can come out here with something that's stock as a rock and have fun, or you come out here with a crazy four-wheel steer buggy, and you can choose whatever lines you want and make whatever trails you want, essentially. It's it's very, very cool to come to a place like this, because back where I live, there there's nothing at all like this. So it's a real treat. Coming up on the rear. There you go. That would be nice if it was that lower gear. like we're kind of on the trail it's kind of hard to tell out here but uh it snakes around here somewhere it hey, dude i'm full of joy just following you i love choose your own adventure stuff it's it's just so rare to find it and you're lucky you got some of it here in uh here in california this is a v notch i don't know if it's much of a v it's kind of an l that uh I've seen done successfully by Riggs, and I saw an extremely nice JK just demolish the whole side of his rig there. Come down. I think it's rolling hard. He was a good sport about it, but it hurt my feelings. It was <laughs> so, that said, this is a normal part of the trail. It's got cool bypasses all around it. If you're feeling like, uh, I don't know, you're feeling froggy on whatever this bullfrog trail, you could totally go through this, but we're gonna opt out because I like the side of my truck. Yeah, I like the side of my Jeep. And I like the side of his Jeep a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna go around the L notch, we'll call it. And I'm gonna look for another cool spot to get around. This trail's super short, that's kind of why it's cool, but it's also the type of place you could bring a buggy. It's an open riding area. That means that you can just pick lines and play on them. Learn from my mistakes. I, I am totally guilty of, in the past, being the dork that thinks that I'm, uh, you know, I get the tough guy trophy at the end of the day because I didn't use a winch to get up obstacle X, or I didn't go around obstacle Y in order to prove that I'm Mr. Tough Guy. Do not fall into these mental traps. These are ridiculous, and eventually, if you wheel long enough, you will grow out of them. I would like to say I have I have for the most part and you just saw Brad and I did it on the internet we went around an obstacle because it was just there's no reason for us to risk damaging the sides of these trucks you've got a wheel for the week not for the day as they say and um, don't feel like you have to be pressured into doing anything out here that you don't want to do however there's some really cool lines out here that I would argue are way more complicated than the L notch but I'm not risking just like decimating the doors and stuff off the side of my truck. So pick your battles and never be too proud to just go around. I might be backing off of this one. 
This is an ambitious one for a overland rig. <laughs> Big lift. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's fully flexed out right there. <laughs> If you want to do trips like these, you need a way to air up and down. And recently, I have been using this Morflate compressor. For the price, it's really hard to beat. I love the fact that I just plug in all four tires. I set a pressure on this compressor. I just go 38 PSI, and it turns on, and it automatically stops at 38 PSI. It's really nice. I, I, before this, I was always a huge fan of CO2 and quite a few other compressor systems, actually. But over the last, like, four, five, six months, this system has actually really grown on me. Now, if you look at the route, you're going to notice that this our next stop is supposed to be like where they film King of the Hammers and where they race King of the Hammers. Um, at Turkey Claw, that's on the route, and then it goes into Blueberry. And then if you have like an extra day or two in your timeline, I highly recommend you hang out in Johnson Valley for a little bit and check this place out. It's huge. It's amazing. We film this during King of the Hammers, and we do not have a lot of t extra time on our schedule, so we buzzed by it, and we avoided that mess. And uh, today ended up just being a giant road day for us. But we did pass by this off-road park and pulled in. Dude, the place is super cool. I decided to add it on the Rocklander route. If if you have a little couple hours to spend here, this place is extremely interesting. I've never seen anything like it, and I've wheeled all over the U.S. So this could be a place to camp for a night if you end up like spending... Like, if you have a really long day or whatever, this would be a good spot to camp, spend a couple hours, have some fun on your way to the next spot, which is Pinion Mountain. Where did you take me, Brad? This is Pinion Mountain. This is a Jeep Badge of Honor trail that we're gonna try to get a big white Tacoma through. Will I get a Toyota Badge of Honor today? <laughs> Tomorrow, we're gonna go Tomorrow. find camp tonight. Tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to go find food. This was our road day. Badass road day, though. It was awesome. Well, it was a rock crawl day to start. Was, yeah. So uh, we're concerned that Girth Brooks is a little bit too wide to fit through the beginning part of Pinion Mountain. But it's supposed to be a rowdy trail, and I really want to do it. So we're going to try. I have a tape measure. We're going to we're going to see what happens. Girth Brooks rides really nice. The handling is unbelievable. Um, nice and wide and planted. Never feels unstable. But uh, Old Girth <laughs> got that name for a reason. The width is an issue in some places. Um, it hasn't made it to where I've had to turn around anywhere. However, after seeing some videos online, I have a feeling this might be the time. But I didn't want to just bypass this. I want to put tires on it. I know that most people are not, they don't build vehicles as wide as this. So most people watching this, could totally still go do Pinion Mountain, but I just have to see for myself if I can if I can squeak this old Tacoma through this really narrow passage. I'm feeling squeezy. Let's see. Oh, tape measure. Every good plumber has a tape measure. Looks pretty squeezy. You know, they could have made a bypass right here. <laughs> that's no fun. Ooh, that's gonna be... That's gonna be 
tight. I don't even know if you can get through that first narrow section. So I'd have to get a tire up right. here. And then you're gonna lean hard. Uh huh. Because usually, <laughs> usually you're putting a tire up here. Someone has yeah, oh yeah. squeezed some of their paint juice on the wall right there. Yeah. And yeah, usually you're having to throw a tire like up here and come down, but I don't even know. If we can get you to that first part. You know what's more important is tire to tire. Tire to tire is actually the widest. 85? <laughs> and you're 89? I would, I'm guessing we'll have to measure. 88. You're, so, you're not squeezing it. No, the only way I could go is if I can get it to climb. We'll see. I might have to try this a couple different ways. No worries, Rudy. Yeah. We got nothing but time. Yeah. How close is it? Like right here, with my fender is probably going right into the other rock, right? Yeah. It's, I think the minute the minute you come all the way up to the top there, you're going to be leaning so hard that you're going to get you're going to get mirror and you're going to get fender into this rock. If anything, your mirror is going to hit here. You might be able to squeeze your fender out of here, but it's going to be super sketch. The mounting surface for the wheels on the front of this Tacoma are 10 inches wider than stock. <laughs> A normal Tacoma build would squeeze through here. We're just, we tried it. We're just a little bit too wide. I'm just watching the fender as you're coming through here. All right, stop. No way. This, this lip right here is gonna rip, it, it's gonna dig in three inches. It's gonna dig in three full fingers into your fender, dude. There's no way. Well, we, we figured there might be no way, but I wanted to at least get tires on it. Brad has been telling me from day one that I probably will not fit through the squeeze, so we had a rough plan B in place. And I actually uploaded that plan B as a bypass to the squeeze that you will notice if you download the uh, Rocklander route Onyx folder. I've got it all in there. We decided to go way back up the trail as far as we could so that I could film as, as much as I could of Pinion Mountain. It seemed like a really cool place. Uh, but unfortunately, we ran into a weird issue. Down the trail and see if I can find it. Hello. Whoopsie. We were mobbing. Brad and I were having fun. We were having a blast. And the motor was, I mean, it still sounds great. But there is a hole. I can, like, see the camshaft through said hole. It's supposed to be a filler neck here. It is no longer there. So we're going to look around and see if it's dropped into the engine bay somewhere. Hopefully that's the case. And um, figure out a way to patch this up enough that I can continue on our trip. I actually broke this a couple of years ago when I was on Ultimate Adventure. We we wheeled all through the southeast in this truck, and it, it was awesome. I forgot that my battery had come loose from all the bouncing, and it had broke this off. We epoxied it back on. Um... I secured the battery, and then I moved on with my life. I forgot all about it until this moment. So since this moment, I have bought a new valve cover that's ready to go on, but I've got to figure out a fix for this. And that sucks. I have to think of something tricky. We were doing so good on time, Brad. We were doing really good on time. I was like, crap, we're crushing it. Yeah, that was fun. It's all good. It's on there. Okay. I bet it's going to leak. But it should make it harder for dirt just can't pour in it now. I wrapped a bearing that I found in one of my boxes in two nitro gloves, zip tied it in a way that they, like, they couldn't come undone, and then I zip tied that whole assembly over the hole. And this didn't drip a drop for the rest of the trip. I cannot believe how well this worked, making a bearing cork out of nitro gloves. But we, we stopped up the hole, which made me feel better because I know I'm not going to be able to just get tons and tons of dust and dirt in here, and I'm not going to lose any oil. Um, so I'm going to consider this one a big old fat W because we didn't have to exit off the trail or anything to fix this. We were able to just finish the trip, and now I have a brand new valve cover ready to go on. We decided to turn around at Heart Attack Hill. There was a little rock thing at the bottom that's really nothing, but we hadn't eaten rock since yesterday. So we decided to play around on it a little bit and uh, start heading down to one of the more scenic sections 
of this. I mean, honestly, it's kind of beautiful everywhere. It's a really cool spot, and there's zero people out there. We just kind of own the park, which is awesome. But uh, we were going to make our way down to Sandstone Canyon. And lucky for us, on the way, we found a little optional rock garden that we just couldn't help ourselves. We had to play in it. Good thing you got that bumper high up on the... Oh, jeez, dude. <laughs> where this the reveal is here which is all, cockeyed probably because the reveal here I mean I push that in push that in the fenders all kind of wonky but it'll buff out I think I mean you hit it kind of hard I think I'm building a new bumper when I get home well I know I know a guy that knows how to do that yeah, stuff that's true yeah, yeah. <laughs> wasn't planning on it but I will yeah oh wow rock landing in its finest so that was fun and I had never done that little section before. Mm -hmm. But while we were doing that, I had an epiphany. So on the far west side of Anzabrego is a trail called Orflam Canyon. Easy trail, it's mm -hmm. scenic, it's down a hill, nothing crazy. On the parallel side of that trail is what's called Rodriguez Canyon. Rodriguez Canyon, I have never done it. It is all of that. Really? Well. That's very enticing. There's a camp spot by, nearby. We could make our way over there this evening. We could drive up and check it out because mm -hmm. it's not something we would be able to do tonight. We could go check it out. If we like it, we can go camp nearby and tomorrow we can hit it hard. I have a few friends that have done it in the past and they rave about how hard it was. I didn't even think about it until we were doing this. Well, uh... You, I, you've piqued my interest, to this, say the least. This, this, <laughs> it's, it's like this. Okay. But well, much longer. Let's go check it out. Okay, let's do it. The next stop on the Southern California Rocklander route is Sandstone Canyon. And this is completely optional. If you're, you know, really tight on time, you can bypass this. But, dude, this place is beautiful. It's really cool. It doesn't take that much time to go up and navigate your way through. And it could be a great place to have lunch. You could actually, I mean, we've camped in here before. So use it as you wish it is a cool spot to go see from here we wanted to go find camp and we wanted it to be a little bit closer to rodriguez canyon but we did find something really cool on the way dude you have got unbelievable eyes dude, dude i've been looking the whole time i can't I've been believe the whole time. you found it it's actually in pretty good shape but i think i think the cap will fit directly on there and you can just eliminate the tube well we can experiment that with that tonight it's uh, all yours buddy all right i'll throw it down here on the floor you are the man. I owe you big time. <laughs> the camp that Brad took me to had a couple of vans already in there, but it just so happened that Brad knew the owners, and so we camped with them. It was actually really cool getting to know these guys, and uh, just because they're in vans and we're in 4x4s doesn't mean we have to be enemies. We all 
camp next to each other, told stories, laughed. It was it was an awesome night, and it was absolutely gorgeous. And personally, when I see a van like this, I just kind of write it off as being someone who's not going to be doing any real, like, quote-unquote trails. But the next morning, they followed us out, and they were doing things that I don't think I've seen other vans like this do before. I know this is just a rutted out dirt hill and Brad and I went up no problem. Well, not no problem. Actually, I tried it in two wheel drive on accident. And then once I put it in a four wheel drive, I went up at no problem. But for a house with four wheels, this is kind of a lot. And you don't see RVs and vans and stuff like that doing things like this very often. One of these dudes actually pulled out the factory Mercedes transfer case and uh, had an Atlas put in, which is pretty rad. So he went from all-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, which is obviously a huge upgrade. But unfortunately, the other van had some hiccups because not only was he in all-wheel drive, but the torque management system was pulling power and making it to where it, it just, to conserve parts, it did not want to allow him to use the van the way he wanted to use it. And because of these nanny systems, he got himself in a pretty sketchy spot to try to back down from. So you gotta try and winch off of Brad, or you want me to position? Okay, you wanna use winch line? Are you ready? Sir. Pull forward, I should be able to uh, think I can get out of here. Boy, that winch really, really worked hard. I'm almost embarrassed to say this genuinely got my heart pounding a little bit. I mean, these vans are super cool. And the last thing that I want is to watch one of these poor guys flop their van trying to go up this hill. So. I was rooting for him big time um, from the comfort of my Tacoma, <laughs> unfortunately. What an epic saga. Dude, that was quite the <laughs> drama. That was quite the drama. <laughs> oh my God. All right, was that the heaviest thing you've recovered? Absolutely the heaviest <laughs> yeah. thing I've ever recovered. I, and technically, I didn't recover it. I needed an anchor yeah. for the anchor. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> that was pretty... Uh, that was, I mean, it was fun for me. I was sitting in a Tacoma filming the whole thing. So. <laughs> it's time to say our goodbyes, get on the road, and head to our final trail of the entire trip, Rodriguez Canyon. And this is one that you saw was an audible. It's one that we, we did last minute. We made the decision to go to this one. So instead of doing two easy trails at the end, we're going to do one uh, pretty difficult one, as you're going to see. And I couldn't think of a better place to put a bow on this route than Rodriguez Canyon. So, Mr. Brad, I like that you're taking me to a place you've never been on this little trip of ours. Dude, I am excited about this because I have always wanted to come do this, but I'm never with the right people in the right rigs. And so this is a great opportunity. I think this is going to be a lot of fun.
this is a really cool spot to finish the Rocklander route, I think, because it's basically just a dirt road, and next to the dirt road, there's a bunch of, like, nasty rocks. Just a few little rock gardens. So, if somebody in your group is limping because they've got a broken part or they, you know, broken locker, whatever, they can be right next to you while you're still going through the good stuff, and they can limp their rig all the way to the end of the Rocklander route. So, this ended up being kind of the perfect place to put a bow on this trip. With a 129 inch wheelbase, this Tacoma and IFS, might, might I add, so not a ton of down travel, this Tacoma is not that difficult to get turtled. It's also not very tall. Um, I'll pull up the guys on 33s and our hood line's the exact same because they'll put a four inch lift on and this just does not have a ton of lift. I like how stable it feels, but I hate how easy it is to get turtled. That's just the reality. You can't build one thing that's great at everything. You kind of got to pick your compromises and this is one for me. I got turtled, and so all my little turtle eggs are just trying to scratch and grab at something to try to get me up and over this obstacle. Oh, boy. Uh, hang on, Brad. It's all right. It's just, it's just right. It's just quieter. Okay. You're really being squeezed, but this tire might go up. Wow. We'll talk about it later. Good news is it's a JK tail light. And they're easy to come by. <laughs> Somewhat common. <laughs> There's a couple of them floating around the US. Yeah. the perfect dimensions and like every dimension <laughs> in order to be able to do that. It felt great. It looked good. Some of you might be watching this thinking, that's a little too hardcore for me. <laughs> and that's fine. That's kind of the beauty of this part of the route is it is like one of the easiest parts and one of the hardest parts, depending yeah, on which way you decide to go. This is the reality of taking big rigs through little trails. I mean, just barely off of what you're looking at right now is a like dirt road. So if half of your group wants to go check this out, the other half wants to just bypass it and hang out and point and laugh whenever you break stuff, <laughs> that is something that is attainable on this section. I want to keep these two separate. <laughs> and we have a lot of climbing to do on the pasture side, so I'm going to try to stack rocks 
on the driver rear and driver front in hopes that it'll all kind of come up together. Uh, I mean, replacing a door is not the end of the world, but I would love to not do that. Hey, you know what? I tell you what, dude. I'm so selfless. I wish I would, I'd rather it be me than you. You know, uh -huh. if the Tacoma just walked on through and the JK was on uh -huh. the struggle bus, yeah, I just feel awful about that. Starting to come up in the rear. All right, all right, all right. Slow, slow, slow. I think you're gonna be all right as, uh, as long as that tire can scoot around. If that tire touches this rock, the body's clear. Good. Yep, you're good. Just keep coming straight at it. You got it, dude. You got it. This poor Tacoma is riding the struggle bus pretty hard through here. I mean, the good news is we didn't get any body damage here, which is really nice. And the problems that I'm having are all solvable, and they're going to be solved soon with uh, portals. It's going to help my gearing issues um, in a huge way. We're going to gain 3.9 inches of clearance underneath the diffs, and I'm going to lower the suspension about 2 inches, which is going to make all my geometry super flat, which is going to be really nice, while still gaining about 2 inches of belly height, which we desperately need so we don't get turtled like you saw on this trip. So we'll test out all the new mods on the next Rock Rocklander route. In the meantime, I am so thankful that I know people like Brad. Yeah. This was an amazing trip with an amazing dude. And it was, we did not stop talking the whole way through and we were laughing. And this was like therapy. Yeah. Going off road with your friends, there's just nothing else out there that can beat it. Brad and I have had so much fun the last four days, just being dudes. We basically have not stopped talking. I can't thank you enough, man. Dude, of course. Dude, it's been amazing. It's just so fun to hang out with old friends. You gotta come out and do these. And I'm gonna have way more on the website, so you can go to rocklanderroute.com. The whole point is like, I like the BDRs, many of you like the BDR, the backcountry discovery routes, but they're made for motorcycles. I was hoping that one day someone would make them for off-road trucks. I'm the guy, I guess. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we're going to be figuring out the route over the next couple days, and then whenever this video goes live, I'd like to have it already live on the website. So for those of you that want to come visit Southern California, already live here, you can just come discover some of these places, choose the bypasses you want, choose the hard lines you want, and have some fun with friends. Huge thanks to Onyx Off-Road for making this route and these routes possible. If you want to save an extra 20% off your Onyx membership, make sure you use coupon code DIRTLIFESTYLE or use the link in the description of this video or the link at rocklanderroute.com.